We now want to talk about morphism of sheaves. You start with the space X and you're given open sets U lying in X. And you're given two sheaves, F and G, which act on space X. So again, sheaf F, you feed in a U, it will spit out a abelian group or a ring or so on. So morphism of sheaves is this map, var phi of U is, goes from F of U to G of U. So this is a homomorphism of abelian groups or you can say rings and so on. So this homomorphism should satisfy this diagram. So you're given V a subset of U. So V is contained within U. So corresponding to this, you have a contravariance here for pre-sheaf or sheaf F, and then you have contravariance for sheaf G. And then you have these group homomorphisms. Obviously you have homomorphisms here also, and a homomorphism here also. So this diagram should commute. Now we have to also think about this morphism of sheaves in terms of stocks. So proposition 1.1 on page 63 of Hatcher says that you know this is an isomorphism. So morphism of sheaves is an isomorphism if and only if it is true at the stock level. So we have isomorphism at each point. You pick up a point in space X corresponding to this point you have two sheaves F of P and G of P you have a morphism or a group homomorphism right here because this is a group and this is also a group. So you have a homomorphism between them. So instead of thinking in terms of set U, you can also think in terms of this stock P. So to prove this, you will first show that this is injective, if and only if injective, if and only if surjective. So everything makes sense at the stock level also. So again, this proposition tells us why it is important to think in terms of stocks. Now we want to talk about three sheaves. So you talk about kernel sheaf, you feed in U into your sheaf. So sheaf is kernel of I of U. So this will be a group. So you feed in a set U contained in X, it will give you kernel of I of U. So U is an open set of X. Then we talk about image pre-sheaf. So image is generally a pre-sheaf. You have to sheafify it to make it a sheaf. So again, you have U, you feed it an image of I of U. So this is a sheaf. So you feed in U, it will spit out a group for every open set U in X. Similarly, you have co-kernel pre-sheaf. You feed in U, it spits out a group, co-kernel of I of U. Now these two are pre-sheaves in general and kernel is a sheaf. The reason why kernel is a sheaf is because zero is unique. So we saw in the definition of a sheaf, zero is unique. And because you just have zero, it also satisfies the gluing condition. But these two conditions might fail here and here because you don't have any zeros here which are unique. And uh, there is a simple value of zero being taken because of the kernel which you can glue with and get a global section. You can't get these here. So more pictorially, this is how it will look like. So you have this homomorphism of groups. So kernel of this map is a sheaf. So we are writing kernel of phi of u. You could have also written it as something like k of u. So precisely those elements which will get mapped to zero here. So just the kernel of this ring homomorphism. So again, if you have F of U, you have some image and this image naturally embeds into G of U. So this image forms your, again, a sheaf. You feed in U, you take image of this map. So this image is also a group. So you have this image sheaf. So this is image pre-sheaf in general. So this is pre-sheaf in general. Again, because you everything maps to zero here, you can see why kernel is a sheaf. You have uniqueness of zero and you can glue these zeros together globally. So on every U, you have a zero. Glue them to get a global zero section. You can't say anything here. And similarly, you have a co-kernel pre-sheaf. You have F of U, G of U, and then you can uh, modulo out image of phi of U. So that is it. Uh, you get a co-kernel pre-sheaf here. 
so co kernel pre sheaf so we have to sheafify this and this so basically sheafify means think in terms of stocks and take their disjoint union so now let us give an example of a uh, image pre sheaf which is not a sheaf so consider this map so instead of var phi we are writing this exponential map here so exponential map going from f to g so f and g are sheaves and now we are considering rings instead of groups so it it takes a function f lying in this ring and in g it becomes exponential of 2 pi i f so exponential of log z will give you z so this is in the image so you're taking log z here and this will get mapped to z but this function id of z equals to z so you have some z here this has no global pre-image on all of x so locally it is invertible but it does not have an analytic inverse on all of x so this is a pre-sheaf but not a sheaf because you can't have an analytic inverse on all of x that globally there is no inverse we now talk about direct image sheaf so say you're given a continuous map between two spaces f x to y and you're given a sheaf f on x so sheaf f on x means that you feed in u into this sheaf f and it will spit out a group say an abelian group now we want to build a sheaf on y so that means you take an open set v in y and you should be able to feed v into some sheaf so we will denote this a uh, sheaf by f f inverse of v and it should able to spit out a group and that is given precisely by this relationship so f inverse of v is some set u so you're feeding in v you're feeding in v which is an open set in y and you're getting a group so uh, more pictorially we can see it like this so this is your space x and this is your space y and there is a function f which is mapping some set here to some set here so this is set u and this is set v so our sheaf is f of u and gives you a say a group now you want to feed in v instead of u so what you do is you feed the corresponding u so you have f of f inverse of v so now you're feeding in v but still you're getting some u here and you will still get a group but now you have this sheaf lives on this space because you're feeding in open sets of this space y instead of open sets of this space x now obviously same thing you have inverse image sheaf so now you're given a sheaf g on y so you feed in v into the sheaf you get some group out so instead of v you want to feed in u so obviously you start taking these sets u all the sets v which contain f of u so basically all the sets which will approximate f of u so you use direct limit here so you're feeding in u and then you see which are the sets which contain u so all the sets which contain u you take a direct limit over them and you get the corresponding group so basically all the sets v which approximate u very closely so that is it so this is a inverse image sheaf because you're taking a sheaf on this space y and you are able to inverse transfer here onto x so basically you see that these sheaves essentially live on the same space we defined them on so this sheaf f essentially lives on the space x only you just make this small shift here to make it live on y and you do the least possible effort similarly here this sheaf g essentially lives on y only you're feeding in sets v only you're just making a small shift you know that v should contain f of u so that you can feed in these open sets which belong to space x now we finally talk about morphism of ringed topological spaces 
So say you start with two topological spaces. One space is x and another space is y. So x is equipped with the sheaf of rings O of x and y is equipped with the sheaf of rings O of y. So that means you take an open set U of x, you feed it into our uh, sheaf and it will spit out a ring. Similarly for open set V of y, you feed in y into your ring into your sheaf O of y and it will spit out a ring. So you are given a map f between x to y. So the morphism would mean, morphism of ringed spaces would mean that we will have map at the stock level. So at stock level, notice this contravariance. You have some x here. You have some x here. It gets mapped to f of x. So these are two points in the space. X is a point in the space, capital X. F of X is a point in the space, Y. So corresponding to these two points, we have two stocks. So we have stock this at point X and you ha also have a stock this. So this is in space Y and this is in space X. So now we have a map going from here to here and that's precisely what it is. So you have this map at the stock level going from space Y to space X. Notice this map F goes from X to Y and this map here is going in the opposite direction in terms of ring maps. So there is a contravariance. Now this map which is at the stock level F of X is a point in space Y and X is a point in space X. This map is a local homomorphism. So that is inverse image of a maximal ideal here. So if you have a maximal ideal right here, its inverse image is also a maximal ideal. And it is generally written like this. So where F is the map between space from space X to Y and this F hash is the map which is given at a stock level. So this is at a stock level. So at stock level, you just have two points. You can only talk about point X and then this point gets mapped to F of X in space Y. This is lying in X.